AutoCAD is so big at this point, mate, that it accounts for 30% of Autodesk's annual $4 billion of revenue from one product out of all the products they do. So it's no surprise that AutoCAD and Autodesk have just ended up becoming synonymous or basically to mean the same thing to a lot of people. All right, then, Derek, if you're not, if you're not busy and you, uh, you didn't fashion about it, though, mate, but if, if you're not busy, well, go down to and get a spot of lunch, mate, if you can, mummy. Oh, look, mate, love to, but I've got a Zoom meeting in about 10 minutes with uh, uh, AutoCAD. With, with, with AutoCAD, you see? Yeah, mate, yeah, really busy. And as I detailed in this video up here, there's tons of AutoCAD versions now, but the main two are unquestionably the full regular, what they call the vanilla AutoCAD, and obviously AutoCAD LT, which is not short for light. We are all okay to stop calling it light. And with full AutoCAD costing around 1,775 of your American beer tokens for a year of rental delectation and delight, then LT is a fraction of that at around 440. I mean, what's the difference? Like, do you need full AutoCAD or would LT be enough for you? Well, truth be told, the both of them are identical for the purposes of what most people would want to use AutoCAD for, with LT just giving you a desktop icon reminding you that every day you chose the cheaper option and you're missing out on something. But what? What does a what's full AutoCAD giving you that you're not getting with LT? Well, here's the 10 main differences in less than 10 minutes. Number one, parametric dimensions and geometric constraints. Because as AutoCAD trainers are back in the good old days, we used to say to training delegates that AutoCAD was just a dumb drawing tool and that if you drew a line, say 200 long, well that line's going to stay 200 long forever, no matter what, unless you changed it. Yeah, not anymore, mate. Around 2010, AutoCAD was bestowed with the ability to create parametrically controlled dimensions and geometric constraints, almost identical tools to how feature sketching is done in Autodesk's flagship 3D modelers, like some Revit, Inventor, and Fusion 360. So these tools let you control the size and the position of object geometry in drawings using numerical and positional relationships. And it gives you that kind of, you know, you move one thing in a drawing and then something else somewhere else sort of moves and change, changes with it kind of effect and basically leaves no more excuses for anyone to leave a drawing in this kind of state anymore. Number two, 3D modeling tools and visual styles. Now, a quick, quick video like this isn't the time to banter on about why someone would choose to use AutoCAD for any kind of 3D serious work instead of said flagship modelers like say Inventor and Revit, but uh, you can if you want. This full AutoCAD now actually has a really powerful and robust set of 3D tools, which I guess is kind of nice after you've already bought it, you've got it, and you're already in there. And it also enables easier isometric workflows. For example, hidden line detail can be controlled through view styles instead of having to manually draw lines that should be hidden using dashed line styles, which is what you would have to do in LT. Uh, but LT does allow for isometric drafting, but you just have to use manual lines, arcs, and circles to, to get that effect, whereas full AutoCAD will let you actually model 3D solids and then look at that from various angles using preset views on the view cube. Number three, CAD standards. Something which sounds applicable really only to drawing offices and CAD managers, but not really, mate. CAD standards all revolve around a DWS file or a drawing standards file, and that contains a checklist of company-defined drawing rules or just your drawing rules, like how you want dimensions to look textiles and fonts, layer settings, and you can run that DWS against any drawing internally or a batch of drawings or incoming drawings from suppliers to see if they're complying with how you want your AutoCAD drawings to look based on what you've set in that DWS file. Number four, data extraction. So full AutoCAD offers data extraction commands over LT, which basically scans your drawing, looks at all the blocks in there and the attributes and can pull all of that data out and then into a nicely organized table, which is a good way of performing stuff like item counts, parts lists and the like. And this data can also be exported out of AutoCAD and into an Excel spreadsheet or an access database. Number five, file type import and data exchange. So full AutoCAD can bring in all kinds of file types, such as step files, Rhino, native SolidWorks, and Pro Engineer files, and then it can export stuff out to STL and IGIS, amongst tons of other file types, whilst LT is far more limited in the data types that it can recognize and output. Number six, any kind of automation from tapping into APIs and programming. So full AutoCAD can utilize visual basic applications and versions of the programming language Lisp, known as AutoLisp and Visual Lisp, as well as having its own action recorder as well for macro style playback of keystrokes and inputs of frequently performed actions that you tend to do on the regular. And this automation and programming interface is one of the more powerful benefits of full AutoCAD because it opens you up to the world of automation and apps designed to improve repetitive workflows. Number seven, 
Express tools. And these are only here because of what number six enables, but it's a big beneficiary nonetheless. Now, I've personally found the Express tools over the years to be rather baffling because the Express tools began life as an unsupported set of extra productivity commands that various AutoCAD developers made a long time ago, but didn't want to or couldn't commit to the main source code. So they bundled them into these sort of unsupported Express tools as a separate installer and as a separate toolbar. And yet here they are still all these years later as this weird sort of extra set of tools that they could just put into the main program as a, in, into the main ribbon bar. They're even installed by default now, whereas previously you had to optionally tick them in. So at this point, I'm pretty sure they are properly supported tools, but basically they're a collection of random point tools like explode attributes, text mask, convert single line text to multi-line text. And they've clearly worked on them a lot over the years and refined them, but maybe they've just kept them separate as another like, hey, look what you don't get with LT type of a thing. Number eight, still linked back to number six, is the AutoCAD App Store. And this is an online store of mostly user published productivity apps that you can download for free or buy, all done mostly by third parties. And it enhances your AutoCAD workflows. And I don't have any numbers, but I'd hazard a guess that this Autodesk uh, AutoCAD App Store sees about as many people these days as the Tinder swindler. You stop playing games with me now. And as a revenue generator, it's probably about as useful as a one-legged man in an ass kicking competition. When you look at the number of published reviews on there, it's pretty barren, mate. Number nine, specialized tool sets. Once all of these were sold completely as separate licenses, each as costly as the full AutoCAD license itself. But now a licensor for AutoCAD will grant you the likes of AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Architecture, Mechanical, Map 3D, and the rest of these industry specific licenses all as part of your annual AutoCAD subscription. And these are all separate installers of AutoCAD with libraries of parts and specific commands or workflows tailored to each niche. Now you might never use any of these, but in a way, these kind of make AutoCAD almost like a creative suite if it had its own sort of desktop app or launch pad with all these apps sort of in there so you know that they're there and you can use them. You know, kind of like the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app has which would sadly never work because A, the general Autodesk user base hates stuff like that, unnecessary what they call bloatware apps, and B, Autodesk couldn't make one anyway that works, and even if they did, they'd either break it or change it within a year anyway. Number 10, online cloud rendering. Well, AutoCAD has a built-in in-product integration with Autodesk's online cloud rendering services, which lets you upload your DWG files into the cloud servers for decreased rendering times. And this also works with Revit and Fusion 360 as well. And there's also an optional project publishing area in the Autodesk rendering gallery if you want to promote your own work online. So those are the 10 main headlining feature differences between AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Now, a recent independent study concluded that users of full AutoCAD would be 7.1 times more productive than users of LT with 86% total time savings over LT using all of these features. But take that study with a massive skip full of salt because that study is purely based on someone using and doing only the things that LT doesn't have, which is absolutely not an accurate representation of how people work. But that's it for this one. If you want more videos like this, like for example, What's the difference between Inventor and Fusion 360, for example? Then get subscribed, mate. Ding the bell. Do the YouTube thing. And did you know Autodesk always seem to have discounts as well on AutoCAD LT? I'll check out the link in the description, mate. That'll take you straight on over directly to that rather hidden discounts page. And it's my referral link as well. Change the store at the top right to your region. And if you do subscribe to an Autodesk license, it'll massively help support my channel and no cost to you. Like, for example, one AutoCAD referral to me is worth about a month's worth of YouTube ad revenue kind of help. So thank you very much hugely in advance if you do thanks again hope you did find this one an enjoyable watch my name's neil cross this is tech 3d toodles